today we're talking about uh, the dark-eyed junco, or the snowbird, as most people call them around here. Uh, one of America's favorite songbirds, especially for people like me, that is a symbol of winter, that uh, they are coming in from their their nesting grounds way far to the north. And I've talked about them in the past uh, in the sparrow program, and I've also talked to them about them maybe in the migration program, but I've never done one completely on them. And they're an interesting bird. They're an interesting study in a couple of different things that that I do like to talk about. And if you have heard my migration uh, story about the junco, do, do forgive me, I'm gonna repeat that, but um, they are an uh, example of many things. One is that they surprise people that they're sparrows. Yes, they are a member of the sparrow group and then they're not brown, hey, how about that? Um, but there are all, they're also an example of um, a bird that used to be called several different names. There used to be different, considered different species of juncos that got lumped together. And now there, there's several of those, those, those birds that are just now called dark-eyed juncos. And, and, they, and, they, and, and they are an, a, an incredible uh, migrator. They, they can survive in very harsh conditions. And, you know, they consider our winters down here very mild and, and, and pleasant to them. Uh, they, uh, their world is not completely covered up in snow like their nesting grounds get covered up uh, here now that are already being covered up and they're already starting to show up. So the dark-eyed junco. So um, if you have an old field guide, you probably, when you look up this bird in there, it probably, ca probably calls it the slate-colored junco, which is the name of the most common of the subspecies, as they're considered, that we get here. And that is, this is a prime example of a slate-colored junco, uh, a male, dark slate gray, light belly, you know, the pinkish bill. This is this is a bird that we see a lot. Now the females will be a lot lighter colored. They'll be a milder, a paler gray than this, and they, they'll be out there with them. Um, and so we see a lot of those. I'm going to show you a map here. This is a map of the United States, Canada, and, and Mexico, and it's showing you in, in drawings those different subspecies um, that are considered uh, all around the country. So if you've traveled to the western United States, you may have seen some of these other, other what are known as dark-eyed juncos that are uh, used to be had their own name and, and considered separate species, but now have been all been lumped together. Here's that slate color junco, S-E-G-A-J-U, slate color junco. If you've been up in the uh, Black Hills of South Dakota, they have what are called white wing juncos up there. They do have white wing bars. And many times we'll get calls of the birds that they, people think they see here that might be a white winged junco, but every one of those have been disproved. They, they are just a, a slate colored junco with a little bit of white in the wing, but this is a truly uh, a subspecies up there. Um, up in the very western part of the United States, they're called, very common birds called Oregon juncos, and we get those here occasionally in winter. And then other in the Rocky Mountains, there's a couple of different called pink sided junco, gray headed junco, and the red back junco. So those are uh, uh, all can be considered dark-eyed juncos, which is kind of interesting. But here, when you're looking out at your, your bird feeders, you may see one of these guys. And this is a, a, an Oregon junco that was taken just a couple blocks away. See how he's got a real dark hood, but his back is brown. The white belly, maybe, maybe a hint of pink on the sides, but that is a classic Oregon junco. That bird is definitely from the western United States. It's nested out there. And, and, can, and actually move down into the plains for it uh, for the winter. So you can look for those among your regular dark eyed or slate colored juncos that are gonna be in your backyard in really good numbers. How do we attract these guys? They are classic ground feeders and they love millet. The main reason I came up with this seed mix called ground throw is because I wanted a quality ground throw mix that attracts juncos and the na other native sparrows, and of course cardinals and stuff too. But they love the little white millet seed. They will eat sunflower as well. So spreading that on the ground is the best thing you can do. Juncos for uh, you know on your patio or on your driveway, places like that. But they don't like perches. They don't. They don't like to get up on perches. If you see that occasionally, it might happen. But boy, they really are not crazy about that. Um, they don't nest in our area. They uh, you know they nest much further north of here. This is a picture of one of those said white wing juncos that I talked about. This is a juvenile uh, bird, a hatchling, that just hatched this year. 
Uh, that was taken up in uh, the Black Hills uh, and the Custer uh, uh, State Park area um, of a juvenile junco. That's about as close as juncos nest to us. Yeah, they nest out in the Rocky Mountains, uh, and they nest to the further north, but we, they don't nest in our area. Now, my, I told you they were a great example of incredible migration stories. Um, and when I worked at Bur Oak Woods and back in the early 90s, I helped a lady, uh, retired school teacher, bird band there. And uh, she had caught um, uh, this junco, you know, many juncos over the years. And when a bird bander bands a bird and the bird is uh, later found dead uh, and they, they recover that band, uh, they send that band in and they get all the information from it um, and it, the person who banded it gets a card and the person who found the bird gets a card telling them well, everything they know about that bird. Well, the bird that she had, uh, that, that she got a card while I worked there and that, uh, it was a junco that she had banded in the backyard at Burrow Woods Nature Center over in Blue Springs, Missouri, that she had banded it 11 years earlier. And it was found dead. It had hit a window at a house, on a house 100 miles north of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And, buddy, if you don't know where that, that is very far north. <laughs> Alberta, I mean, um, Edmonton is the largest city, the furthest north on the planet. So it is very, very, very far north. And what we know is she had caught that bird two other times in that 11-year span. So that bird, that little tiny bird, had been making that journey year after year to nest somewhere 100, over 100 miles north of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and then wintering in the backyard in Blue Springs, Missouri, back and forth at least for 11 years. That's an amazing story to me, but that is a, that's what birds do, and we don't still don't fully understand you know, migration, but it's, it's spectacular that they can do that kind of thing. So fascinating birds, juncos, you can attract them to your yard, like say the ground throw, put it near cover. They like they they feel safe and, and, and skirt, be able to skirt under cover and things like that. So be looking for them. They're showing up. Um, great idea for a program. Send in more if you will. Thank you for that idea. Uh, give us a like, give us a share if you will. Two, one. Would you like to learn more about wild birds? You might want to hit that subscribe button.